Thank you very much for inviting me to give the speech. Numerous studies have shown that mechanical unloading can induce reverse remodeling even after, uh, even in established heart failure, but the mechanisms involved are still poorly understood. And our study hypothesis was that reverse cardiac remodeling by ventricular unloading can normalize the expression of genes which are deregulated by myocardial infarction and consecutive heart failure. This is basic research. We did that in rats. And the first part of the study was to study the effect of myocardial infarction on myocardial gene expression. And uh, this was compared to control. We used an Affymetrix gene chip to investigate gene expression. And we investigated function six weeks after induction of myocardial infarction or sham operation. And we function at six weeks and uh, we investigated gene expression after eight weeks because we wanted to study the effect of unloading in this two-week periods after six weeks of uh, intervention. This shows the effect of coronary ligation on cardiac function and you can see from the movie as well as from the data shown here, there's a reduction in ejection fraction by about 25% after myocardial infarction in comparison to control and an increase in left ventricular internal diameter. This is not dramatic, but it's uh, highly significant and uh, it's comparable to other studies. This shows the gene expression shown in a Volcano plot. To the left, these are genes which are downregulated, and to the left, genes which are upregulated after myocardial infarction in comparison to sham treated controls. And most of the genes showed no significant change, but 874 out of 10,000 significant genes investigated, or 11,000, were downregulated and 182 were significantly upregulated. And the interesting question is what myocardial unloading does to this change in gene expression pattern. And we induced unloading after six weeks of established heart failure. Again, compared that to a control group. We would have liked to implant a device yesterday I, uh, I learned it could be called red pallo, for example. But uh, you see, the established devices are uh, much too large. So we had to go to another model, which is, most of you may not know it. It's an extreme model, it's, uh, but it's well established since more than 50 years in experimental biology. And it's transplantation of a heart to a donor animal to a rat or can do that in mice as well, which is very, very difficult. And the circulation of the transplanted heart goes this way. So it's perfused normally through the coronary arteries and then the blood goes back to the right ventricle and is ejected to the vena cava, but the left ventricle is completely unloaded. And this model is very well described. Yeah. But the hemodynamics is difficult to measure and it's even more difficult to do echo on these hearts. It's almost impossible to try to do that. It's, so that's why I don't show data on that. So this intervention causes cardiac atrophy, not too much. Heart rate stays the same, so it's, there's no change in the stimulation of the heart. And you can see that unloading normalizes and normalization should go along this line here and you see normalization takes place in about 12% um, of the uh, down-regulated genes and in about 8% of the upregulated genes here. So unloading normalizes these genes and normalizes these genes as well. This was completely, un, uh, this was uh, 
blind, okay? It was an unbiased approach. We had no initial hypothesis which genes might be upregulated. And I'm a physiologist. I would have expected from previous research that uh, myocardial filaments might be uh, normalized or, uh, or um, genes uh, involved in calcium cycling, something like that. But when we looked into the data, we found uh, that these genes were downregulated by myocardial infarction, upregulated by unloading, and this one uh, in the other way around. And all of these genes are uh, in one or the other way associated with the hippo pathway in the heart. And I don't know whether you know the hippo pathway. I didn't know it before as I analyzed the results, and this might be a shame for me because I should have known it, but being a cardiac electrophysiologist, this is more biochemical stuff, so I delved into the topic. The hippo signaling pathway is important for cardiac development. It's also important for cardiac uh, repair and regeneration, and during development, the hippo pathway determines the growth of the heart. So hippo, and I explain that to you in a little bit more detail, the uh, central signaling cascade of the hippo pathway starts here. This is a kinase. This is a uh, uh, this was discovered in Drosophila, and this is the mammalian homolog of hippo. It's uh, MST12 kinase, and uh, this phosphorylates uh, this kinase. This is the tumor suppressor gene, and this one phosphorylates the effector molecules. It's yes associated uh, protein, YAP, and TAS. I can't recall the name, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, very complicated. And these are transcriptional activators, and if they are phosphorylated, these activators are degraded. So this is a, a negative, an inhibitory pathway. So if you switch on hippo signaling, then this, uh, these effectors are downregulated. If you if you shut off hippo signaling, then they are upregulated. You have more YAP tests. They translocate into the nucleus, and they, they increase gene expression of, for example, uh, cysteine-rich uh, protein 61. And this protein has been shown to be very important for uh, differentiation, for proliferation, and for adhesion of uh, cells. And there are actually drug programs which, uh, which uh, address this target by itself. So, and this one was one of the genes which were normalized uh, by unloading. So we were quite excited about that. And after we found this uh, result, we, uh, we used a biased approach. So we looked for gene expression of YAP and TAS and uh, also for uh, angiomotin, which is a modulator of the translocation of these two proteins into the nucleus, and the results are shown here. So unloading normalizes yap test expression. It also normalizes angiomotin expression, and it normalizes uh, cysteine-rich 61 protein. So this together fits very well with the recent literature, which suggests that yap activation improves cardiac function in survival after myocardial infarction and hippo pathway deficiency, so down, uh, inhibiting the hippo, the inhibitory in hippo pathway reverses systolic heart failure infarction. And there was recently a report on a small molecule which activates this complex. And this one has also shown beneficial effects uh, on, on um, myocardial infarcted my uh, mice in this case, or rats, I don't recall. But, and now comes the big but, we also saw that this uh, kinase here, the last kinase which impacts on the, on the stability of the yap tas protein is upregulated and also alpha-catenin is upregulated and both should exert an inhibitory effect on these proteins. But this is only transcription, and we are now in the process investigating whether they are really more active on the protein level. So basically, I'm more confident that this upregulation uh, shows into the right direction. But there's still work to do. 
and this is my summary and my outlook following my myocardial infarction, approximately 1,000 genes, 10% of all genes we've investigated were significantly up or down regulated, and mechanical unloading normalized about 10% of these deregulated genes. Modulation of the HIPPO pathway may contribute to the beneficial effects of left ventricular unloading in ischemic hearts, and the next steps are obviously validation of gene expression, which we actually had done for the genes I have shown, but there are many others to be investigated, determination of YAP phosphorylation, detailed pathway analysis and investigation of tissue samples obtained from patients, and we have already contacted a clinic in Berlin where we might get samples from. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. That was very elegant work. I was impressed to see your transplant model. That must be fun to, to do. Um, from the perspective of, of discovery, looking at this HIPPO pathway, to me, that's a new one on me as well, um, impressive uh, to see that and thinking about ways in which you might alter YAP in a positive way, showing that mechanical uh, function is one way to actually improve this result. Have you looked at other mechanisms that might affect YAP? Are there drugs or anything along the way? That no, happens? not yet. Nothing not yet. This is pretty novel, the results. So I wrote up the abstract. It's, it's, I never presented that before, and I was surprised that I was selected to give a presentation on that. So this is a little bit preliminary, and after I learned the, the, the message that I would have to present, reached me during my vacation here in France, and then I called my laboratory to do some more research. So, <laughs> so. We'd like to be on the cutting edge here at AQ. <laughs> uh, questions from the audience? Yes. Hi. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about the, the unload? How do you know, because this is a big, uh, the model is, is, a, is a big intervention. So how do you know it was the unloading that uh, was associated with those improvements in, in the uh, HIPPO pathway? Um, what, what did you use as a control uh, for this uh, model? You mean the controls, or I, I didn't Yes, so hear it, it. you used uh, the red left ventricle after yeah. the, uh, in the implanted Hearts, right? Yeah. And versus what? Versus a normal oh, the, reds or? No, no. The strategy was to compare gene expression uh, in hearts after myocardial infarction versus gene expression in hearts uh, first. The first one was comparison to normal hearts, yeah? And the second comparison was uh, uh, unloading versus. Uh, uh, not unloading. So in post, okay. It's, it's a, you, you, you address a very important question because we discussed what should we compare at which stage. So first we looked for the genes which are deregulated. So that comparison was normal pressurized hearts and normal pressurized hearts after, uh, after myocardial infarction. And the second comparison was myocardial infarction with, against, without unloading. So this was the second comparison. And to know whether the effects of unloading are specific for, uh, for ischemic hearts, we also compared, after deep blinding, compared with, uh, with the, a fourth control, or the second control group. So, uh, non-ischemic hearts which were unloaded. So we could look whether the effect that we observed in ischemic hearts is specific for the ischemic heart or whether it's simply a general effect of unloading. And all the effects I, I showed are specific for ischemic hearts. So this is not an unloading effect, but it's an effect which depends on whether the heart has been made ischemic or not. It's a little bit complicated. Yeah, this is a, it's a really great study. Thanks for showing that data. The, um, 
I think you know the the challenge of the autologous transplant, uh, you know, heterograft model is is there are a lot of issues with it. You know, yeah. the inflammatory response. You're taking yeah. the heart out. You're putting it yeah. into a, you know, so the entire milieu has changed quite a bit. Um, but nonetheless, short of building Rat Pella, which uh, you know I think the company may may or may not ultimately do something like that. Uh, you know, one of the things that may be helpful is that you're really looking at a post-infarct ischemic cardiomyopathy model because mm. you completed the infarct yep. and it's six weeks of LED ligation. Yep. Um, one of the things that would be great to see is this type of uh, unbiased omics approach uh, for human samples mm. for patients who are on, for example, 5.0 support uh, for a prolonged period of time, whether it's post-MI or in the ischemic uh, population that goes on to LVET. Mm. Uh, and I think really that will help uh, advance the science because these models I think are challenging. Um, they provide some insight but if you can validate that, I think in a human subset, um, that really starts to help uh, push uh, push the preclinical work a little bit yeah. further along. I completely agree with you. This basically was done to to get an idea. It, it's hypothesis building, but it's uh, the the important step is to go to to the clinic. I completely agree. If you take from this presentation that you in future in the future think of the possibility that hippo might be involved in the positive effects of remodeling, then, then everything is fine, I think. It's still very important. I think you were a little bit too modest when you said everything is preliminary. I mean, Heimo is the head of physiology at the University Hospital in Hamburg and works for over 20 years on, on unloading, and we've had a collaboration since then. But I, was, I learned a lot because I, I also wasn't aware of the hippo pathway. So I'll, I'll, I'll still have to look a little bit more into it. But uh, uh, going on to your question, any ideas on, 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 on a possibility of drug inhibition of the HIPPO pathway or is the... Yeah, this is uh, the paper that I s uh, cited yeah. here. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, this is really a fascinating study because they developed a, a substance it's shown here and this is quite small. And you may know that uh, if the molecular weight is too big, then, then the pharmacokinetics will never work in humans. So this is a small molecule which could be modified. And uh, this is a positive enhancer of this YAP. And this is another uh, um, modulator of trans transcription. But this is a positive modulator of, uh, of uh, TAS-YAP uh, uh, activation. And they used this molecule to treat animals which were subjected to myocardial infarction. Uh, and they, I checked that they uh, administered the substance together with the induction of myocardial infarction. So it was really treatment, early treatment, so to say. And they observed uh, increase in left ventricular function, less fibrosis, less apoptosis, and cardiomyocyte proliferation. So this fits very well with the concept. Mm -hmm. of, and and uh, mechanical unloading might be another way to induce exactly the same pathway. And uh, if you combine both, that, that might be perfect, for example, in your model. Okay, very good. Well, thanks, Heimo, for this uh, exciting presentation.